Hi, we're here at Key Digital's Cedia 2012 booth demonstrating Compass Control, the first control system built from the ground up to use the iOS device iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone as the control interface. Now here we are demonstrating the Compass Control app and as a custom installer you can download this app from the App Store or from iTunes free of charge. Here's what you're going to get with our flagship template. You have all of the iOS gestures so that if you know how to use an iPad for example you know how to use Compass Control. We have the flicking feature from zone to zone we have volume control that's adjustable with the swiping feature, lighting, shade control, HVAC control, okay, all within a single page, which has been a very popular feature. The fact that we have all of these categories of control without having to jump page to page to page. Additional features that we have here are expanded views. For example, here we have an expanded view of lighting, <coughs> shade control, climate control, okay and now this is one of an infinite amount of ways that key digital's compass control can look for you you can actually build compass control using our library of template uh, templates that are available for any application or you could build it from the ground up to look exactly how you'd like that interface to look for your client okay now how does the app interface and connect to your various devices to be controlled. We're talking about your IR, your RS-232 controllable devices, your IP controllable devices, any AV, uh, excuse me, any HVAC lighting shade control that works with a repeater, key digital compass control supports, of course with bi-directional drivers already available for Lutron and April Air among other Compass Alliance partners. Now the, the method that Compass Control interfaces with all of these devices is the KD MC2500. We'll take a look on the face of the unit. You actually have your status indicating LEDs and built in right in the center there you may see the IR sensor. This is actually your IR learning built in already integrated into the master controller. Take a look on the flip side. You have eight multifunction ports on 3.5 millimeters. They can be configured as IR or RS-232 or sensors, okay? In fact, they are fully bi-directional, so they can be sensors, a voltage, audio sensing, video sensing, etc. We also have two uh, relays with NO and NC settings. You also have RS-232 on a dedicated DB9. This is our main RS-232 port and our main IR on a 3.5 millimeter connections here. Now you have your IP connection, how it interfaces with your uh, Wi-Fi based, of course, iOS devices. Now many people say, you know, this sounds fantastic, but what you have <coughs> discussed there, the reliance upon the Wi-Fi network and in the house at Cedia for the Cedia installers or in the commercial application in the commercial building for our uh, pro AV installers sometimes can uh, bring up some objections now key digital has a brand new and 100 percent patented technology where we actually are showcasing here our KD WPCB and WPCW key digital wall pay control black for WPCB, key digital wall plate control uh, white for WPCW. We're looking at the WPCB here and what you actually see is hard buttons uh, that can be programmed to contain any uh, amount of codes or any codes that you'd like to uh, program that for and what you don't see is a hardwired Ethernet connectivity. That's right, it's a hardwired Ethernet connectivity that allows you to uh, circumvent, if you will, or uh, break away from the reliance and the limitation of only being a Wi Fi uh, connected device. We're actually providing a hardwired Ethernet connection to the iPad through these wall plate controllers. Now, additionally, you actually have um, IR 
and an RS-232 port on this wall plate control black, wall plate control white. Therefore, these devices can actually act as their own contained mini master controller. Okay, perfect for your single zone applications. They could fully integrate, again, with the MC2500 if you'd like as well. Uh, now, this has uh, generated a lot of positive feedback. And if you'd like to find out more, you got to go to www.keydigital.com slash compass. Hi, I'm Leon Sinberg from Key Digital Systems. I'm the system designer. Uh, I'm going to do a quick run through on our new Compass Navigator program to help customize an iPad right off a of PC editor. This product also works with Macintosh if you go to PC emulation mode. So when you open up a new project, you go to File and you see this screen. Programming the Compass Navigator is an intuitive process in which you go to the program tabulation here on the top and you follow the steps from left to right. System configuration, assign zones, zone construction, set up controllers, controlling flow, flow test, and then finally uh, you can execute IntelliBuilder. I hesitated there for a second because executing IntelliBuilder executes one of our pre-made templates for you. This is an optional step. You can construct a system from the ground up without using IntelliBuilder, uh, which will go uh, be a different demonstration for purposes of the five minutes we have at the show today. Okay, so when you go to system configuration, you're basically selecting from a menu of products you have. Uh, it's like a menu at a fancy restaurant. Whatever you've selected and specified into your system, you select here and you drag it into this display here. So for example, uh, let's say we have a Sony TV, a 55 grand Wiga LCD. You just put it in, you drag and drop, and you would do that for all the products you have, including your key digital matrix switcher. Uh, and uh, as well as your other control products. So then you go to assign zones. Again, this is for template construction. When you assign zones, you start out with uh, this file name MT4 IntelliBuilder in this case. Uh, that's the name of the file. Uh, you can drag more zones in. Let's say you want to drag in a bar. You drag it in. Once you drag it in, here in the, on the right you see the properties. The properties allow you to specify what properties you have. So in this case we have video, maybe we have audio, maybe we have light, maybe we have climate. As you see, as you're uploading it here, when you minimize it on the left in System Designer, it gives you all those options. Okay, then the next step is you go to Zone Construction. In zone construction, you're putting in the devices that you've specified in system configuration and you're putting it into the zone construction module. So you drag it into video. There you go. If you have a matrix switcher and you want to add more control lines, you would go to switcher and you would drag that in under the video input line of the TV and that gives you more inputs depending on what matrix switcher you specified into the system. I would ask at this time if you have any questions, but you're viewing at home. So if you have any questions, my email address is leon at keydigital.com. I'm more than happy to answer those for you. All right, we're moving on. At this point, you set up the controller. You put in the name of the controller. Let's say it's the kid's iPad in the kid's t DVD uh, in the kid's room. And then you would put in the ID number. It's very important that in order for this product to work, there must be a master controller hardware unit. In this case, the current master controller hardware unit available for key digital systems is the MC2500. So you would put that in as well. Next, you go to controlling flow. In control, yes, here's the master controller unit. Thank you, Masha. Uh, the master controller unit here uh, correlates to the controlling flow icon. So you have eight input ports. These are IR and RS-232. You have two relays. You have uh, serial IR, uh, TCP IP, USB, that's used for programming and for learning functions into the master controller, for example, from a remote control. And you have RS-232 dedicated. So the way this is literally hardwired into your system is the same way it's going to be designed in this part of the configuration process. Uh, 
So for example, if that sixth port of the master controller was used for that TV that we specified here, you would put that TV in and that way it's now specified and then you would wire that IR from the master controller to that TV. All right. The flow test now is uh, part of the configuration where you test the function. So uh, we have one of the TVs that are specified in the system here. You want to test if the power works, you press play. Now in this case it says connection failed because the master controller is not connected to our demonstration here at the show. Uh, but when your master controller is successfully connected, it tests to make sure that the command packet got to the device and that should be a successful uh, test. Okay, so those are the three steps you need. So you need to have a router, master controller, in order for that test to be successful. Okay, finally, for purposes of loading a template, you would execute IntelliBuilder. Uh, this is really one of the key advantages that our product offers for quick programming. Once you execute IntelliBuilder, it will compile the graphic user interface and it will compile all the command packets you need uh, that will control the devices from the graphic user interface. If you can point the camera at the uh, screen, I'll show you uh, the power of IntelliBuilder, uh, which is our key digital trademark as well. As you can see, it's compiling all of the different GUIs step by step and attaching all the command packets to the GUI. Uh, when you, when you want to fully customize your system from the ground up, this IntelliBuilder teaches you how to do that uh, step by step. If you follow the steps of IntelliBuilder, you will see exactly how it's constructed from the ground up. Um, if you see this tab here, Events and Actions, the Events and Actions tab, when you click on one of the graphics, the Events and Actions tab highlights what the actual programming side behind that graphic is. So for example, you might have infrared on there. You might have um, a event in action that says turn page GUI. So all of the GUI manipulations, the graphic user interface manipulations and the control manipulations are done through the events and actions and those are attached directly to the graphics. Um, now for purposes of having a quicker demonstration of IntelliBuilder I'm gonna stop it right now. Uh, you can watch the IntelliBuilder video on our website Okay, but I want to show you one last thing, uh, two more things before we break on this demonstration. Okay, so for example, this pause button is selected here, right? Uh, we might want to, let's say, add a new button. To add a new button, you go to uh, button library down here. You select the button and you put it in. You'll notice that it also gets put into the page designer as well as the graphic user interface. This is a command structure tree, very similar to how you would use a Windows file, uh, regular explorer for Windows. It, that's how this is organized. So you see it both visually on the iPad and you see it, how it's organized in the PC editor software. To add an event and action to this button, Okay, you, you would click add new event here. You would say the button state is down. You hit okay. All right. And then for example, you wanna add an IR command. Uh, now let's add an IR command to the new TV that we specified, the Grand Vega LCD. And what command? Power on, that's where you always start. Okay, so now, you see that this button that we created will turn the power of the TV on. Um, you can also add other commands in the events and actions that allow you to link to other pages of the graphic user interface. So you press Control E. Now that activates the emulator mode. You can now test to see... Hello, how are you? Good, I'm... <laughs> okay, uh, you test the... Uh, you're now emulating as if this was on the iPad before we upload it. So, you click on the button and the connection failed here because it's not connected to the MC2500. But it did send that command packet through. So that's as easy as it is to program this uh, uh, navigator. Now, we turn off the emulator. The final step is to upload the system project. 
Do you want to save it? Yes, we want to save it. Okay. Uh, at this point, you would log into the Key Digital server. This, this login information you would get after you're C1 certified. You have to watch our training video on this product and you have to take a 25, I believe it's a 25 question multiple choice exam. Uh, once you're C1 certified, you buy a license from us, which is $300 retail. Uh, you have to buy the MC2500, which is $2,500 retail. Then you get the login information from us. Once you log into our server, you're uploading your system project to the server. And then because of the device ID entered for your Apple iOS device, it'll then download that into that device. At that point, you are done. With access to our remote server, you can also um, debug your own uh, system that you created for your client. So if your client is 200 miles away and the ESPN channel changed from channel 59 to channel 72 and that's on one of his favorites and you want to change that, you can change it in the program, upload it into our server and it will automatically update his iPad. So that's all part of the advantages you get for uploading the system project. My name is Leon Simberg for Key Digital Systems. I'm a system designer. I thank you for your time and thank you for attending Cydia.